Before we even start, I want to apologize for any possible honking coming outside my window. I have been trying to record this video for almost 15 minutes now and I've had to restart over and over because of the honking and I realize you can edit it. However, I'm trying to do this a very casual, informal video with minimum editing for time constraints issues that I'm going to discuss right now. So please bear with the horrible traffic of people who cannot drive well and who cannot understand that here it is illegal to honk your honk unless it's an emergency life or death situation. So anyways, hello everybody, I'm Roxy and this is Rekmi BS. And I told myself that I wasn't going to film uh, anything until I caught up in all my editing. I have like five videos ready to edit and upload. But the event is today, starts today actually, so I sort of had to do it on the go and which is why I want to do it very casual, very informal, it doesn't have like the intro song and anything, it's just me talking and let's hope it fares well. I don't know if you know, but Savage Reads, link down below, is uh, hosting a reading event all about big books and encouraging us to pick up our big books. I think it's really interesting. I'm going to show you my TBR, but I'm also going to discuss a little bit the concept of big, intimidating books, because to me it's very interesting, um, and I have lots to say about it. Just so you know, the dates are this weekend, and then the last weekend of May, which I'm not sure the dates, I'm going to put them down below, and I'm also going to link to his um, video because of course he explains it much better than I do. There are three so far and the third one would be in August. So big books. I know a lot of people feel very intimidated by big books but that has never been my case. I've never seen a book like this for example and thought to myself you know what this is too big. However as I've grown up I have found some logistical problems with books. First of all now that I go to dance lessons but I don't get to return to my apartment between my uni classes or my job and my dance lessons I sort of have to carry around my uh, sports gear which is it's a hassle and also because I use my computer for my job and sometimes for my uni I also have to carry my laptop and so it's I have I carry a lot of weight with me <laughs> Um, both emotionally and physically, so sometimes big books, um, you know, I, I wouldn't carry this around because it's, it's really heavy unless that's the only thing I, I was going to carry, which is unlikely with my pace of life. Also because I study what would roughly be the Chilean equivalent of an English degree, it's, it is English literature but it's also a lot of English and translation and linguistics. Um, I read a lot. I read a lot of literature specifically and I also read lots of, of theoretical stuff. Um, and the thing is that sometimes you get a week that's very light and you get a lot of reading done but then you get like two months where you cannot pick up more than 10 pages of a non-uni related book. So that lack of consistency I found really affects my craving. More than my craving, my actual picking up of heavy long books because I think well if I'm only going to get this week to really immerse myself in a book then I should pick up a book that I can finish in this week because if not it's going to be left there hanging which has happened by the way so but beyond that I don't find a book that because the book is long it's intimidating at all but it does pose some problems and then I ask myself why don't I pick up bigger books during, for example, readathons or vacation. And then it's because I found myself, for example, in March, I only finished one or two um, non-uni related books. And, you know, it, it's fine, but because I get so few books ticked off my physical TBR, I sort of feel the need to go through as much of them as I can when I'm on vacation, which is sort of ridiculous, but I also can't help it. That's my issue. So I really appreciate that this is happening on a weekend. I'm not sure how much I can actually get done, especially this weekend, because it's it's been crazy. It's been, this year, this semester has been so hectic. 
However, I am encouraged. I am uh, very willing to make myself carry the book um, or give myself some time to read while I'm at home which sometimes I don't do because I think, oh, I should be studying, I should be doing this or that. That's basically it. So I want to show you some of the big books that I'm not necessarily going to pick up for these three dates. Also, I'm considering all three dates. I am not going to do a special wrap-up for this. I'm just going to, as I finish the books, hopefully, I am going to include them in my general wrap-ups, which are coming, I promise. So some big books to me are very deep in and out of. For example, I have this lovely complete George Orwell essays in a Spanish edition, which I bought before I, I read essays in uh, in English. So yeah, I bought this a long time ago, but I'm really enjoying it. Like everything I've picked up, I've enjoyed. I must admit that, okay, that's just ridiculous. Okay, I must admit that most of the essays I've read so far are literature related but I will read some political ones. I, George Orwell is just such an interesting thinker. But again, this doesn't books like this don't concern me because every once in a while I pick up this book and read a couple of essays and just tick them off. And I actually comment them and, and put like the ones I loved and the ones that I, I had issues with, etc. I have a similar book to that, but lighter, both in like form and um, just it's, it's lighter than that tome and that is The View from the Cheap Seats by Neil Gaiman and this is a collection of his essays selected by himself which I think it says selected non-fiction so I'm probably in love with Neil Gaiman's brain but I still haven't read any like I have Trigger Warning and um, The Grave Dirt book and I want to read American Gods and um, never wear and I so I want to read more by him but I just haven't because I'm not that good with genre fiction and it's not because I don't like it it's just that I don't crave it usually but anyways I also have ha Alexander Hamilton by Ron Chernoff and of course I picked this up because I loved Hamilton and I I wanted to know more about Hamilton although I can't even be bothered to pick up like a full biography of my country's uh, founding fathers but sure I'll read like a 700 pages biography on Alexander Hamilton and George Washington because I also want to read the George Washington one anyways I started reading it for nonfiction November Re was really enjoying it um, I got like 40 pages in and then college happened and finals happened and I didn't get to continue on and I'm going to restarted actually because I, I I remember because it is really well written and, it, and it's really readable so I remember most of what was happening but I still want to get like the full experience. Phone by Will Self and this apart from being a chunker you could argue that it's not as such because the hundred, um, the type is actually quite large but it's just one long sentence, paragraph, whatever you want to call it, that's a, that are phone conversations, I presume, but yeah, it's like heavy, I don't know if stream of consciousness or just like the stream of dialogue, but it's just like one long sentence, and I'm very intrigued, but you really do need to have mental brain focus for this and try to get through it as fast as you can or you're going to lose track. Plus, you know, this having been nominated for the um, Goldsmith Prize, I, I do think that apart from form, like the content will be pretty challenging as well. And I have one that just sheer size and has have prevented me from continuing on and this is Oscar Wilde by Richard Ellman. And Richard Ellman is also an authority on Joyce. He has like a very heavy book on James Joyce as well. I'm going to hold it like this just because of the glare. I don't want to do that. So it gets dense sometimes. Like Richard Elman certainly has a very heavy, dense prose and, and he goes off on tangents. But it is fascinating probably because I love Oscar Wilde and I'm very interested in his life and every little meaningless detail that 
um, Elman provides to me is very significant so yeah I'm probably going to return to that another dip in dip out book for me is the penguin book of Irish poetry I love Irish literature of course I love Irish poetry but I would like to read this in a little bit more of a systematic way than just like read a poem or two which is what I have been doing I also have the Divine Comedy by Dante sorry I, I again it's a very like whitish cover and then it also has the plastic so it's it's even more glary sorry of course it's something I've wanted to read for a long time but actually picking it up now and comparing it to all these other heavy books this um, it's not that heavy so probably I'm going to get this um, I don't know when but maybe August I think August and then I have books like this uh, which is Little Women which is not intimidating at all it's very easy to read um, but it's really heavy it's it's actually like just like physically this is much heavier than this one I, I feel like this is just me complaining about how big books are big just like physically big but I just want to let you know how I feel and they also have Inventing Ireland, and boy have I talked about this book a lot. Um, I did move, move forward during uh, the Irish Readathon, so thanks for that. But basically this is a collection of really heavy essays by Declan Kiebert on Irish literature and Irish politics. And it is readable in the sense that it's not super heavily academic, but it is quite dense. And you get to have your like recent modern Irish history background like there and so it's not something I easily access related to that I have modernism which can seem like not such a big book but believe me the type here is tiny 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 um, this is a collection of essays by different people on modernist literature from 1890 to 1930 edited by Malcolm Bradbury and James McFarland who are both like authorities in the literary analysis world and this is just fascinating but because I study so much literature sometimes I just don't have the brain to get into more literary like heavy analysis let's get to what I'm actually going to be reading for the readathon so one candidate as I said, um, is uh, the view from the cheap seats, and probably I'm going to be dipping in and out of this um, for the next few weeks. But the one that I'm actually like, going to carry around with me and I'm going to start tonight is The Book of Strange New Things by, by Michel Favor. I haven't read any Favor. I know he also has another big and very famous book, which is called The Crimson Petal and the White. But this one to me sounded way more fascinating. I want to read The Crimson Petal and the White, but this one sounded like wonderful because it's about a missionary that goes to like a, another planet to preach Christianity and that sounds fascinating. And just the cover, I like, the cover is just so beautiful, I can't even. A Storm of Swords by George R. R. Martin. I might pick this up perhaps in the second date because I'm going to be very busy if I am busy I might pick it up uh, but I don't have any problems reading the Game of Thrones books a lot this A Song of Ice and Fire but Game of Thrones is the show a lot of people say that I don't have any problems with that um, because again it's not the problem that it's big this is easy to carry around and you can dip in and out of it because it's in chapters with point of view I also would love to read the Ulysses by James Joyce and again it's another like challenging book aside from being kind of long but I would really love if by August for example I were able to pick this up then a book that I do want to read more systematically but also is a dip in dip out book for me is the complete no the portable sorry Dorothy Parker edited by Marion Meadey and the thing is that this includes like the original portable Dorothy Parker plus some other um, compiled Dorothy Parker uh, works um, specifically I think it includes more articles and essays which is just great I would love to finish this by December let's say let's let's be 
generous. I also have some books that I don't have physically here, but I do own physically. Moby Dick, another not only physically but intellectually daunting book. I know, but again, this that one is also a candidate for uh, vacation extra dates or any extra dates that would be added by the end of the year when I'm already on vacation. And then I want to read The Secret History by Don Tart. And actually this is a strong contender for the third date or the second date actually because I've wanted to read Donna Tart for a long time and I've also wanted to get more into campus novels like I don't come across them on my own very, very often or at all but like w when they talk about them I say ah oh, campus novels that's so awesome and so I don't know anyways please let me know if you're planning to participate and whether you like or dislike um, big books. I really like when you can get immersed in a book and which is something that I miss sometimes and so I'm going to give myself the chance to do that. Please check out uh, all the links down below and see you next time. Oh no, my dog started barking. Bye.